In this video, we'll take a look at a couple different date functions to calculate new date related values. Let's create a new sheet and call this calc dash dates. And for this first example, let's calculate the difference between the date the product was shipped and the date it was actually ordered. That way we can analyze the actual duration from when the customer ordered the product to when it actually shipped and use that data to focus in on some processes to improve shipping times because optimally we want to get our products out as quick as possible. So let's take our product name and drag that into rows, adding all products. And then we want to put order date next to that along with the ship date. And because we want to see the actual date that this particular item was shipped, we'll use the exact date. And when you change a date dimension to be an exact date, it automatically converts it to continuous. So you can see how the pill changed from blue to green. And we'll do the same to our ship date. So again, exact date. And now let's convert these back to be discrete by right clicking discrete. And the reason it's taken so long to render is because the amount of products that we actually have in our data set and it's figuring out the exact date for every single product and writing them out on the screen. And we'll do the same for order date, right click, change that to be discrete. And now we'll rearrange these so they make a bit more sense. We'll drag order date before our ship date. And you could see here at a quick glance, this product was ordered on the 14th and shipped on the 14th. This one was ordered on the 23rd and shipped a day later on the 24th. This one had a two day lag. So let's fill this column here with the difference in days between both of these fields. So we'll create a brand new field. Let's call this new field time to ship. And for this, we'll use the date diff function. You could see it right here. We'll click that. And the part that we want to calculate is the day. So we'll just type out day comma our start date, which is our order date. comma, and then the end date, which is our ship date. And Tableau is complaining that the calculation has errors. Reference to undefined field day. In order to resolve this, make sure that your value is surrounded in string literals. So now it's a proper formula. Let's hit apply. And to validate this is working properly, we'll drag in our new field, time to ship. Just drop it on the ABC section so it turns this measure into a text display. And you could use various date types in here. So you can do the, the week, number of weeks that it took to process, number of months, quarters, years. So the date diff function is quite powerful in determining the difference between two dates. We'll hit okay. And now let's find the product that takes the longest to ship. In order to do that, we'll take our product name, right click sort. We'll sort on the field time to ship. Hit apply. Because we're using an ascending sort currently, it's showing us the products that ship the fastest, but we want to do a descending to find the laggards. Hit apply. 
So right here, there was one order that took 92 days to ship. The next one, 84 days. So these transactions took the longest amount of time to process and it really weighed down the overall for that product. So perhaps someone from the shipping team would want to look at this particular transaction and better understand what went wrong with that in order to prevent this issue in the future. And if you wanted to see what this transaction consisted of, you right click and choose view data. We're jumping from the summary to the full data level. And now we can see that this particular customer, Art Ferguson, was a corporate customer ordering envelopes. The order priority was critical, yet it still took them 84 days to process. So Art was probably not a very happy camper. So the best way to analyze this would more than likely be taking the average and then we'll drop the order date and the ship date. So now we have an average by product, what ships the fastest and slowest. We'll convert this to a bar chart and we'll do a sort descending. So you can see right here, the average time to ship for these envelopes is 19 days. Not very good. Next up, the white chalk, 12 days. So as we scroll downward, we can see the products that ship more reasonable time frames, three days on average. And some products that actually ship out the same day. What if we wanted to know the average overall time to ship? So to see how the company is performing as a whole, all we do is remove product name. And now we can see that the average overall time to ship is a little over two days. And the reason this average is now being calculated properly on the overall data set is because we remove that dimension. It's no longer analyzing at that dimension level, it's analyzing at the entire data set level. Nothing else is getting in the way of this calculation. Let's now find out what happens when we use just regular subtraction between two dates. What does Tableau calculate that as? So now I'll just undo and get back to our tabular layout. Okay. So let's create a brand new field and we'll call this time to ship two. And now we'll take our ship date minus our order date. So the future minus the past, hit apply. Okay. And now we'll locate our time to ship two and I'll just double click. And in this example, Tableau is properly calculating the difference between one date to the next using days. But if let's say you didn't want to use days. Say you wanted to use number of hours or minutes. We'll edit. And again, we'll need to use the date diff. This time we'll use hour, comma, order date. comma, make sure we move our parentheses out, ship date, close parentheses, apply. Here we can see that the number of hours have now been calculated. Days, hours. Let's move on to the next unit and explore how to use logic statements, like if-then statements in Tableau.